promised, guys, our third match of the night, which will be a halfway point, is Mot4 versus Strike. We have both captains ready. I believe it's Conflict and White May on the line. Let's go ahead and get ready for our face-off. What's up, guys? What's up, Conflict? How you doing, man? Hey, how's it going, buddy? I'm doing good. So I do want to ask you, you guys, kind of rough start to the league. You guys are 0-2, losing to Simp and wreak havoc. But how are you guys going to turn around this time? Uh, we've done a lot more practicing. Uh, we've gone through li literally every map. We have our lineups pre-selected, our players pre-selected. We want to do pre-selected for every map and every side. So we've tried to prepare a lot more uh, and over the course of the week. Uh, we've had a lot more free time. Um, one of our members was in the hospital. He just got out. So we're kind of recovering from a lot of team issues uh, this week. So we hope to do a lot better. All right, cool. Uh, the second thing I want to ask is that you guys have been getting a lot of flack for kind of playing more defensive and turtly. What do you have to say in response to that? Um, I think that's just a result of not being where we want it to be in terms of preparation and having a lot of, you know, team issues. So that automatically you have to go, I guess, into a defensive stance. Um, but that is not how we like to play. So Ooh, that's okay. all I'll say about that. Hey, it's that's, understandable. That makes me no excited. One, no one wants to play slow. Everyone wants to attack. And I think if yeah. you guys are practicing, do you think you're going to be on the attack more? Uh, it really depends on the situation. Um, it, it really depends on the situation. Uh, we like to play on the attack, so I'll say that much. All right, cool. So we want to also ask some questions to White May. White May, you lost 0-2 in m your beginning matches. What are you fixing for the next coming match? Uh, we do a lot of practice. Uh, just did the training, and we will focusing on the city map. OK. Uh, cool, so you guys are practicing a lot more. I want to ask about your series against Reek Havoc. Uh, what were you guys thinking in the last moments when on Abbey? Me? Yes, like what were you, how, how was the team dynamic ag uh, against Reek Havoc and Abbey? That was a fair lot, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we won't have to talk about that too much. In fact, yeah. we want to get you guys to your battle stations immediately. So let's go ahead and t do the, toin uh, the, coin, the, the, the coin toss. The there coin toss. The coin toss. The coin toss. The coin toss. Coin toss. Conflict, you are the higher C. What are you going to call? Uh, Tails, please. All right, Tails never fails. And it is. It never fails. The eagle is the winner. What are you going to pick in your map? Um, we'll take steps, please. All right, steps. And White May, you choose the spawn. Uh, I will say south. South side. Okay, so we're going to have steps south for strike and north. We'll go to Mop 4. Thank you, guys, and good luck in your battle. I, I don't really see any way of... Mop 4 pushing into strike. I mean, keep in mind that uh, Mop 4 did get the first map choice. Maybe they pick steps because they feel confident to 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 draw it out and then trying to let things play out from there. Uh, so we have 50 seconds on the clock, but I don't foresee any true movement coming out just yet. Uh, but strike, they're the defensive team. They're very good responding to big attacks, rearranging and covering and making sure that they survive. They're very good in those positions. When we've seen Strike try to go aggressive, that's when they've kind of fallen apart in the past. Yeah, and they actually are set up perfectly for the only attack that I would consider truly viable against this position. There's, uh, there's two T69s, Lustburn and Megumio. You see other than these two bushes on, uh, on my screen? Yes, perfect, awesome. And they've got great fire down one of the attack lanes that I would consider most viable for Mop 4. I think Mop 4 might have picked up on that kind of positioning, and they're just not yeah, going to risk it. after Captain No Pants took some damage. Nemesis here coming right at the end. It won't matter. Tier 1, uh, T1 dying is inconsequential, as we do have a draw for the first map of the series. Welcome to Mines. Beautiful little river dock over there, set up by Mr. Joshua Clutch Gray. As we see, Plated Mega from Team Mop4 uh, heading over to the island, the red team on the north side. South side is Strike, as we pointed out earlier. Uh, also kind of spreading out. Again, Strike being a very good defensive team. Looks like they are taking a more defensive position already as uh, two of their T69s are falling back. And it does look like Borgata is actually going to the rock where tanks go to die. Borgata is covering the hill, trying to deny that control. And it looks like this is a uh, this is a defense reminiscent of what we saw from Wreak Havoc. 
Yeah, I and yeah. Uh, to, to be completely prepared for any kind of those pushes, whether it's on the hill or even through the island. Yeah, some really cool crossfires that we could detail if this gets really slow. Uh, a pretty know. cool formation immediately. Yeah, well, it's it kind of like a like a football defensive position, right? Yeah, it's good coverage. You got a few guys in the back ready to uh, cover anyone going way deep. No hail marys here. Oh, you're, you're mean American football. I was oh. referencing like actual football. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> like international I just football. We live in America. Soccer, so as you might call it over in South Carolina. Yeah, we that's what we do it, and we don't talk about football because <laughs> who plays football? Actually, South Carolina has a really good football team, don't they? Which football is, are we talking about? You got American a, football. American <laughs> we it's you, well, we got Clemson and we got USC. So yeah. I mean, that's right. Go Cox. Yes. First, sh <laughs> first shots <laughs> on potato. <laughs> are you are you a fan of the Cox? Yeah, you know they have a good they have a good team. It's a very good uh, athletic. I think they're D one right for NCAA. So all right, definitely keep an eye out for them, especially from South Carolina. Don't be ashamed if you're from there. I'm a bit of a Cox fan, a little <laughs> bit. Uh, on my wall at home in South Carolina, I've got a nice clock and a trash can, some posters. Well, I'm a fan. We, I'm a fan of the Cox. I'm also a fan of both of these teams. Potato has to be very careful though, because he did get spotted immediately and lit up. He's now down to basically one shot from a high roll. Two seventeen. Yeah. So low. That's that's some really n just early damage. Potato just totally didn't need to take out there. He, he's he uh, he's alone. He potato man. Potato lived up to his name. Yep. He well he lived up to half his name. He ain't 007. <laughs> he's definitely potato in yeah, that regard. Yeah. Not getting those shots out. <laughs> <laughs> Captain No Pants did take a hit though, and in return, what's he what's he at? I I don't know exactly, but the main point is Mot4 has done enough to kind of pressure Potato off from potentially moving back. Oh, his commander's dead actually. That's that could That's be huge. annoying. His reload time is basically gonna double. Yeah, his well, not not entirely double. I don't think I, it'll go down. Uh, okay, almost a double. Almost double. There you go. But it's he's going to be down on view range. That's a huge important part. He's not going to have view range, and right. he's going to he's going to perform a little bit less efficiently than he was before. Just every little bit of skill is going to go down. That's just the way the commander affects yes, the whole tank. A little bit of everything, yeah. especially with the jack of all trades, really helps as well. If another member died, the commander would be able to take over. <coughs> I've always not going to be in this scenario. I've always wondered if jack of all trades works if your commander dies. I've never, I've never actually checked. I don't think and so. And I've, I've never been a fan of jack of all trades, but it's such a cool crew skill. It is. It yeah. is. Uh, it's uh, for those of you who don't know. Jack of all trades means that whenever one of your other crew members, that's not your commander, gets knocked out, the commander just takes over that spot and, and tries to compensate. And you won't get full skill. Yeah, he won't. You won't perform at 100 percent, but he'll. He'll get. He'll do a pretty good job. Yeah, he'll. I think he's like 50, 50 or 75 percent, yeah. as opposed to like horrible, yeah, horrible you can't performance. Turn. Yeah, like just, it's it's definitely worth it at 100 percent. One hey. of the first times I played. Oh, what's up, Greetor? No, I was just gonna wonder. Rukil, um, you know, Strike MA or Strike took two Amex 1390s but didn't choose to take the hill. Would you consider that a mistake by them, or, you know, is it correct for them to just back off as a stylistic, et cetera? I, I'm, I'm really not sure about that. 1390s full tank, and wow. Ooh. Nice shots from Stagnate as he's able to take out Potato. Again, Potato, you ain't 007. You look at more like a vegetable as Potato is now down, and as a result, Mop 4 is up eight tier points. And again, check Monster, even though it might be the Rock of Death, he can take a nice hold down position at T32. He did have to burn his kit a lot earlier. Yep, he, uh, he does have a cool position. It is a nice hold down for him. He couldn't fire low. If there were tanks down below the hill, too low for him to shoot, there would be a rock in the way. And couldn't grab the balls, could he? No, he couldn't. He'd have to go for the horns. Gotcha. And, uh, but, but White Mate and Megumio are both in positions where the hold down will work for the T32. So I mm. just I think that Mop4 has really discovered the position and they're working very very well right now to just defeat the strike defense which is going to take all of this map. It's going to take all of the 10 minutes to break this and get yeah. those 8 points and they have them but now now is when I would be saying, well maybe we could do something with this. Let's not take too much risk but let's get all the ground we can and try to get another eight points. You want to make sure that w that strike isn't going to be able to come back in the last second, even though. Right, up. swing something completely yeah. like we've seen. Uh, even before, uh, if we look at back at like the Casadoras game versus uh, Scurry Hard, I believe, on Abbey. They last second. That was like the last second eight point tier swing. If you're not careful, you, all it takes is a 2v1, and then you can make something happen. Uh, Mop 4, until then, is not pressed for time. They have the eight tier advantage, 42 to 34. 
can see in the top center of the screen. They can take it and win it. That's right. So the pressure, the, initi the initiative is on strike. Uh, the only person kind of in position to do anything remotely aggressive is White Maid to get maybe a spot. But even then, he's just going to see Check Monster in the T32. Probably in hull down. Yeah, and at best, you can maybe penetrate if you get a really good roll in T69. You barely? There, you could go for hatch shots, but I yeah. mean, where, he, where that T32 is, Check Monster, he's in a very strong position because he's raised up. If if the T69's at the oh, high ground... so it's even an angled, yeah, right? With yeah. the nice so hold down it's position. a very tight shot to get that, that commander's hatch on the top. So can you penetrate? You I mean, it's 298 armor, but then with, a, with an angle... It's such a thin shot. It's so thin that if but you... But there, you're, so you're saying there's a chance. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there's you said that so reluctantly. I just... There is a chance. It's tournament so accounts. They have one unlimited gold rounds. thousand? <laughs> <laughs> I have actually. There's a. There's a. Don't tell me the Really odds. cool. There's really cool uh, calculator like out there that yeah. like every time you take a shot, there's like a percentage chance it calculates if you're really willing to crunch the numbers while playing World of Tanks games. I don't really recommend doing that. Ah. But there is a calculator for angles and whatnot. I, I think it was it. on Reddit the, this earlier today. But there, there is a, there is a, there is a chance. Man. There's always a chance. Probability. Generally, generally there is a weak spot on every tank. Whenever he's exposed, just except a little the T32, bit. Right? Well, except for the T32. There's no, it's there's no weak spot. The there's, T32. it's like reverse angling, and then I mean, reverse angling is one of the the hardest things to break. A hull down, another one of the hardest things to actually pen someone. Yeah. Face hugging, we're done very well. What about like a reverse angle hold down position? That's just like that impossible. Would, is that even? Is that, that's just <laughs> do it? Do you just do? That's too much. <laughs> I mean, by You're that point, it's that's like what we call a try hard, right? In puppies, when yeah. people are doing that. It's like you're really, you're really reverse angling in a hold down, buddy. <laughs> Seriously, you're angling your turret and hold down. <laughs> oh. that's, a little, that's a little excessive. Yeah. But you know what? You can't be too cautious if you're mop four because inevitably strike has to do something. As uh, right now they're in position to lose. If the next two minutes nothing happens, as the clock is winding down on mines, we have a little bit of rearrangement as a member from Strike, uh, one of their T1s, has moved all the way over closer to the town. But still, Mop 4 has recall recalled everybody from the island back to the cap. Yeah, they're definitely ready for an, a full-on just derp by Strike. And, I, and I'm not seeing any movement out of Strike right now. I, do they know if they have their eight points? I mean, Borgata's moving up now. He might go to the rock where tanks go to die. Get some spotting there. Ooh, T32 gets lit. Good job from Borgata. Great view range uh, here. He shot. He tried. And he didn't succeed. Oh, wait. No, he did. He got it. Ooh. Nice shot on Check Monster as he will fall back and allow Borgata to get a little bit of advanced position. Ooh, is it a trap, though? There could be T69s. I'd be leaving T69s right by the rock. Just no? Okay. Okay. That would be cool. That would have been cool to see two T69s just pop up. Nuke Actually, the there are two T69s yeah. ready to go, Randall. So your call is correct. It, Check Monster is not alone. Strike going to try to make something happen in the last minute of play. And it revolve all around this misinformation that Mop4 has been able to sell. Or is it? Because four members from Strike can completely overwhelm just three members. Unless Mop4 can get some good crossfire. The first initial shots have been initiated. But Check Monster will escape. Yep, and then we have Borgata going up to the hill, but White May and Megumio, along with Lustburn, look like they want to just push straight down. They're, it's, I was thinking they'd do something more aggressive, but this is kind of, you know, really not sure. I'm not, I it's think It's a little hesitant. They're, they're not necessarily committing just yet, but Borgata can try to go for the flank and get some shots. Maybe on Bokker. Borgata goes a little bit too far, and he falls down the hill. He is going to get lit up immediately as Plated Mega does finish it off, and that was a big blunder from Strike. That, uh, that, that, I couldn't that's even just get on end him. the game. I couldn't get on him in time, and he just went down so quickly. Mop 4, great reaction there. Now it's now it's Megumio and Lustburn, but Megumio's about to go down here. He's 159, and it's that over. That won't matter. Mop 4 takes battle number two, sitting on their lead and able to draw a member from Strike out of position. Nemesis taking out the fury of <laughs> what could potentially be a lot of tension built up in this series. As Mot4 is the red team in the bottom half of Himmel's door, Strike has chosen the north side as well, both teams kind of shoving a lot of their members over towards the eastern side of the map. But Mot4 is sending one of their heavies that could be the, the 5100 or 
IS3. Do you think I've we'll really see? Do you think we'll see a big hill fight? Maybe. You know, it was something like we were saying in the earlier broadcast with Mr. Peter and Rotterdam how fights just kind of escalate initially. It's like a T1, and the T1 brings a T69 to snipe and then get back into position, and as a result, another per the other T1 brings a T69, and they bring just more and more until it becomes kind of like West Side Story, where it just becomes an all-out gang fight. Complete. On the top of the hill. And it's just so crazy because... And we're on the western side oh. of Himmelsdorf. Well, actually, this is the eastern this side. This is the Jets versus the Sharks. <laughs> who's, uh, who's which gang? I don't okay. know. Well, <laughs> Mop 4 are the, the white guys, so I would assume that they're the Jets. Okay, well, that makes <laughs> a lot of sense. <laughs> that would make, by default, strike the Sharks. Uh. I, think, I think I got that right. I... But most importantly, who on strike is Maria? <laughs> 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 it's definitely Potato. It's got to be Potato. <laughs> the T1 Look at tank. him in the beautiful uh, petite T1. tier one tank. Uh, so delicate. Like a flower. Uh, strike is uh, stacking a bunch of their members at the top of the hill right before they can kind of pop over. Meanwhile, Mop4 already has three members behind the castle, as you can see in just a second. Uh, Captain Middle Pants played in Mega, ba Bach Rocker. I realize we also haven't discussed the tank composition, but the most important thing you need to know is that Mod 4 has three 5100s, and they're all on the hill, along with the T69. The first shots being laid out, and White May will take the first hit. Ooh, but only one hit. I think I, s I heard two or three shots go out. That could be... I don't that know. That could come into play. It that, that, that could come hugely into play, especially if they miss one more big volley. You could see a push out of strike. I mean, if they decide right, to share the damage, yeah, they try and f share the damage, they could get in there and just f clean up on those 5100s as they reload or as they're in the last shots. Uh, it may require one more tank to come up to the hill, though, maybe Lustburnt or Megumio to lead the way. Maybe you can see that. Gritor, what were you trying to say? No, what were you trying to point I out? I was saying us? Conflict was taking a little bit of damage as well, as you can see in that tier one battle. Uh oh. Uh, unfortunately. Another tier one might get the punishment though, oh Gritor. Yeah. And Greater Van drops immediately, and that gives a pretty decisive advantage for Mop 4, even if they just scale back and pull from them. Even if they do that. But we'll have to see what happens. Well, we've got actually both Lustburn and Megumio are pushing in their IS3s. They see all this pressure, and actually, ooh, they're gonna push straight to Check Monster. Great shot! Tracking and damaging Megumio, that is exactly what he needed to do to slow the ascent, to slow the assault of these IS-3s. I think he's all alone. Did Megumi, Megumi know? <laughs> Did he burn his repair kit immediately? Yes, he burned oh, a kit. Oh, wow. That is, that's why it's huge. He's tracked out. He probably didn't need to burn it, maybe. I'm, 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 it's, a, it's a question to ask. Ah, well, we'll, we can ask that another time as Conflict will sacrifice himself to get the spot. Four members from Mop 4 is going to completely rush down. Three members of Strike. White May does manage to get some good shots before he drops, but it may not matter as three members from Mop 4 still are charging down the Western Hill. Fish is now under heavy pressure as Plate Mega is trying to go for a big shot. Now, Bach Rocker has to be careful. He doesn't want to go too far and overextend. He's just going to let his allies do their thing as the autoloader still has a couple shots. I believe uh, Bach, or I believe uh, Stagnate was still reloading there. Yeah, he'll be up in about, I think, five seconds or so. He stops. The shot's coming out. Here we go. Oh, Fish trying to get oh, around the corner. He yeah. does manage to escape, giving some breath of life. P Potato. Potato dies again. I'm giving him too much of a hard time. Though. Yeah, you're really He's breathing. He's a T1 him. against his 5100. Yeah, he doesn't stand a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Although I don't know if... Maria! <laughs> she's... She's dead. <laughs> Maybe, unless there's a, some sick plot twist at the end. Depends who's directing this movie. If M. Night Shyamalan is, I, she's never dead. It, I think Clutch Potato is actually ever directing comes back our movie. Again. Clutch is directing this movie. <laughs> He's directing. Well, I expect a fantastic musical number at the end about maybe the shortcomings of Strike, as currently they are down 20, oh, only 24, 25. They got a nice shot off and was able to recover. Uh, in the end, you have to keep in mind the hit point count, though, as, uh, as you can see that Fish and Bachrocker are both within inches of dying. Fish could just get blown up by almost everything. In fact, he might go down here, but Stagnate, is he on the clip? Is he, is he clipping? Yes, he yeah. is. He is oh clipping. no, that's going to be very cool. Oh, this is kind of awkward. <laughs> well, uh, not no. An fight at <laughs> He's all. not going to be able to get the shot on Stagnate. Stagnate trying to confuse him. Fish is missing Fish. shots. It could, it's He's got to focus, He's got to be able to hit him shots, and he doesn't. Stagnate able to completely outplay Fish. That was side scraping Ooh. right there. But Andre. Blue Base has been captured, and Mott 4 is able to secure the win. 
maybe. Oh, the yes. other counter was going down as well. But Mot4 will secure battle number three and jump to a 2-0 lead when we... Welcome to Ruinburg, where we see the initial opening movements. Both teams heading over towards the East Delta Village. Let's go over tank compositions while we have a brief second here, Randall. Yep, so on the side of Mop 4, we've got a full autoloader team. We've got three 5100s and two T69s. And on the other team for Strike, it's an autoloader load loadout, but we've got a 1390 instead of a 5100 here. So Strike trying to be highly mobile next to uh, Mop 4 slightly slower. Auto loader setup. Uh, well, maybe that. I mean, we've seen 1390s brought to Rumberg to get good scouting, as Borgata immediately spotted by Mop 4. Still doesn't indicate anything to Mop 4 of what's to come, but that does give some relevance to Borgata, as I don't think he got the full scout on Mop 4's composition, but his sixth sense did light off. Yeah, he didn't catch anyone. Really amazing. It's really unfortunate if you do that with a scout run. That's huh. that was an advantage. Of all things, that of the 1390 spot. Yeah, it's no, like no, no. Borgata. Borgata uh, saw his opponent. In oh, okay. Who did he see? I missed it. He saw. Let me see who it was. I know it was one of the Amex 5100s that crossed okay. over, and that's obviously a huge tell because he knows. Okay, if you're crossing over the Amex 5100, I know the majority of your tanks. Are yeah. Okay. If if he'd Fair gotten enough. the full load, the full just entire team moving over, that would have been so huge. That's, but that's all on Borgata as a scout to do that. He's in a 1390. He's got this great opening move that he can make as a 1390 that can catch the entire team if they're moving quickly over to the east, which they were. And he could have caught all of Mop 4 out, and and we would have seen that. Then Strike could have moved up, taken well, advantage. Strike was going all the way, uh, gunning down the A line. They weren't really gunning directly for the Delta Village. So yeah. even with them seeing the 5100 going into place, the rest of the team were just way too out of position to really take advantage uh, to react to that type of movement. Strike was the knight, and Mop 4 was the bishop. And Mop 4, as a result, was able to get there a little bit quicker. Mm. How do you like that, Gritor? Mm. Me gusta. Uh. A lot of squares you can move with bishop. <laughs> knight has a lot of uh, interesting positional advantages they can do. That's right, and Strike. They've been the team with interesting positional defenses thus far. Borgata's still making rounds, trying to get some scouts, but hasn't been able to counter-scout the opponent. Randall, yes. I'm going to give you a camel trivia. What's the camel rating on the 1390? What is it now? What is it nowadays? I, I'm asking you. I don't know. I used to know. It's 15%. 15%. Yes. Huh. What's the WZ-132? I don't know, man. 15.5. Oh, that's cool. Now I know that the 132 has a better camo. Better. Yeah. And you add like a 80% camo skill crew and plus a, a net, and it'd be really cool. Be That's set. very cool because camo is now additive yeah. instead of instead multiplicative. Instead of multiplicative. Yeah. Which is huge because that means the difference between your heavy tank and, and the light tank is a very, very small percentage. That's right. It's, and, a, and it's not as big as it used to be. Yeah. And light, sure. light tanks, they get their advantage of, of camo on the move. As That's right, it's still 15% if the 1390 is moving. So in this regard, if Borgata was unseen, even if he is moving within a certain range, he would still not be spotted. It's still so much less huge than what it used to be. Light tanks used to yeah. be just ninjas moving around <laughs> in the open. You could just pop up anywhere. I know one time on... Uh, oh. oh! Well, the conflict was not a ninja in that regard. He got blown up immediately by fish. Very in fact, I think that's the first significant uh, uh, non-1390 scout for Mod 4. Wow, yeah, that is, it's really unfortunate to lose comps like that. Although he does have the advantage now of being able to direct his team without <laughs> having to worry about driving his He took the Mac G approach, <laughs> 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 which is die early so that way you can issue out commands and orders. Very, very clever. And it might result in a 3-0. Wow, I think, I think Mac G might be onto something if Mod 4 ends up winning this 3-0. What a brilliant plan. <laughs> Throw away your T1, guys. Calculate it. <laughs> The, Mac, be, the Mac attack isn't actually an attack. It's just <laughs> kill your T1. That's right. It's it's definitely uh, something we can explore. Maybe next time we interview Mac G. I see he probably is watching and, and laughing about how silly we sounded. And how much we're making fun of him for dying <laughs> so much of his T1. Oh, uh, Mac G, of course, has visited our studios. We have an interview with him, which we'd love to show you guys throughout the content. And, of course, if you guys have any ideas of your... Uh, if you have segments you guys would like, go ahead and submit it to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash WGLNA. I know we've been getting more requests for Terry the Intern. Terry the Intern. Yeah, I think he's in the back right now, uh, probably working incredibly hard because we work him 
Because we overwork him. Overwork him so much. I think he's chained to his desk. He is. Oh, good. Okay. No one let him out. Did we feed him today? I'm sure we did. I'm sure someone did. Someone will. If we haven't already. Okay, because I think we left him in there one night. He just stayed all night. Working. That is the sound night. of the smallest viola in the world. Mach 4 are going to still take a position here in the East Delta Village. Just like they, they still have don't have enough information whether or not they can move forward. Of course, Strike, they have the advantage in terms of the camo because they have a lot more bushes a little bit farther up the village. Yep. Although, uh, is there a lot of camo opportunities in where Mach 4 is settled? I'd, I'd say Mach 4's position it only has, you know, buildings, really. Okay. If, if you're going to peek around those buildings, there's generally no good bushes. There's a few that you can take, but you can't be that far up. Not in F9 and 0 and stuff. You have to be back in uh, H0, uh, J0, K0, over there. Okay. There's some nice bushes there. Yeah, and we've that's, seen that's where the tank at, destroyers yeah, sit all that's the time. Exactly. Back there is uh, fine. Fine for camo. Oh, I hate that in pub <laughs> matches so much. It's just always like a... Yeah. Like a Sue waiting there, just ready to blow me you up. You think no one's there, but then you find out the hard way. It's like, okay, it's it's 11 to 11 right now, which means only four tanks are alive. I see three of their members. It's like, I really, really hope the tank destroyer is not sitting in this one bush that I haven't checked yet. And he's and sitting in the bush always isn't is. every time. It always is. <sighs> Definitely would be uh, not ideal for Mod 4 to push into strike in that regard. Although, if it comes down to it, Randall, I'd rather have a building than a bush. If it comes to cover. Yes. Uh, Especially since the way bush mechanics have changed. Yeah, I'm, I'm still getting used to it, and so many other players are. So many scouts are. It's just yeah. uh, it's a hard thing to deal with. T1s, I I mean, trying to play a T1, there's there's so much T1 play that carries over. But the thing is, using certain bushes, you can't. There's certain bushes that used to be viable, but now you're too close to the enemy, or, or, or just something like that, and you just get spotted out. Right. Can't even just do some nice pokes and whatnot. Yeah. Before, you used to be able to shoot at pretty significantly close range and not get detected because you'd be 20 meters behind the bush. Not the case, or at least according to Rukil, not the case anymore. Nope. That 20 meter rule completely gone. So what's the rule now? It's just it's that within a 100 meter radius, like all bushes disappear if you shoot or something? If you shoot, you're, it's just bushes. They just work as they do. Now, some people say there's some weird stuff going on, but I mean, it's it's so hard to figure out new bush mechanics because they, they decrease the effectiveness of bushes and, and trees and fallen trees and stuff. Mm. So... It's it's a matter of figuring out if if your additive camo if it adds up to something significant enough. Uh, well, yeah. again, uh, I encourage you guys to do some more research if you care a lot if you're light tanks. Um, until then, we see Mop Four has completely evacuated the eastern part of the map and has fallen back to their cap. Now there is there are still two minutes in this match, and we can still see something happen. And Strike is pushing just in time. For, 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 Mop 4. for Mop 4 to actually yeah. leave. Yeah, Mop 4 has gotten straight out. Actually, it's good for Mop 4 because Borgata actually just, he's in E7, or sorry, yeah, e, no, E6. And he has he would have had great shots on Mop 4. Yeah, if he was if, in position. If there were some proxy spots coming out from the rest of his team members. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. but members of Mop 4 conveniently were now looking towards Borgata's way as he's able to cross Lucky the road. Why did Borgata cross the road? To get to the other side. Well, Mop 4 wasn't looking. Well, that's just too bad for Mop 4 now, isn't it? I guess that's not why he crossed the road, it's how did he cross the road. So the joke is... I have to work on I have to work on my material. No, why, why <laughs> to the back cave! <laughs> why did the 1390 <laughs> cross the road? To get a flanking position. Well, it's, he's getting out of a flanking position. Look, oh, there's well, battle buddies. You're right, he's actually just going straight on to Mop 4. Yeah. And in that regard, Mop 4 is ready to receive. Now keep in mind, if this battle draws out, Mop 4 wins the match because at best strike can go 1-2. Borgata has been spotted. He's been doing a good job getting spotted and not damaged as he is able to see stagnate in the reciprocation. Ooh, the shot has missed and chipped the fence. But he does take a hit. He's down to 906. And White May takes a hit too. Uh oh, and just shots everywhere on to strike as they have lost hit points spread across a lot of their tanks. Meanwhile, Stagnate finally taking first hits along with Captain No Pants. But it will result in Nemesis being taken out. Another uh, advantage in there. And also, keep in mind, Megumi. Oh, Megumi No is actually down for the count as well. A lot of hit points still being drained from strike. Captain No Pants trying to escape as he has Captain No hit points. Bach Rocker is trying to go into a corner and bait out more members from Strike, so that way Ma 4 teammates can clean up and be able to get the shots onto Fish as well as Lustburn, but it may not matter because 
Bob Ford is going such a good position. Yeah, it's that's... gun. A, a fi oh, wow. Fish is also clipping, trying to get into a position. Fish caught once again, maybe clipping, trying to ram and do something. Lustburn, can he finish it off? No, he's clipping as well. Everybody's clipping. Draw. Draw. Okay, so in the end, Mop4 gets the draw and wins the series 2-1. to one. At strike, at best, we'll go 1-2. <laughs>